Hello everyone, this is Mr. Appel, and today I'm going to walk you through uh, graphing a rational function uh, in case 3. Um, and I'm just going to walk you through the whole process. If you're stuck, hopefully this will help you. So I know this is a case 3 because the degree on the top is a 2 and the degree on the bottom is 1. So when the top's bigger than the bottom, that's a case 3. So we're going to walk through our process. Um, X and Y intercepts are always nice to find. Uh, they're going to help us uh, figure out what's going on with our graph. So, you know, you can kind of do this in any order, but since these are already laid out here, I will uh, go in that order. So the X intercept, of course, is when Y equals zero. Um, and actually, really, before that, uh, I've mentioned before, we, we should, uh, you know, it's a good habit to do any factoring first to see if there are any holes see if there's any canceling, see if anything funky is going on. So the top is just an x plus 1, x minus 1, the bottom's just the x minus 2, so no holes in this graph. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that, nothing's going to cancel. So the x-intercept is, remember, when y is 0, which in a fraction means the top is 0. So the zeros of the top are what makes this 0, and there's two of them we see. So x equals negative 1, x equals positive 1, those are our two x-intercepts. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and add those to your graph right now, you can do that. Those are my x-intercepts. y-intercepts, of course, are when x equals 0. So if you plug 0 in for your x's, you get negative 1 over negative 2, which is positive 1 half. So that is your y-intercept right here at positive 1 half. Try to get that as accurate as I can. Let's look for asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are when the denominator is zero, because uh, those are x's you cannot plug into this function. It blows up because you're dividing by zero. So this one's easy to find. x minus 2 equals zero. So x equals 2 is a vertical asymptote. And I'm just going to go ahead and add that to my graph right now. Remember, that's a dashed line because it's not actually part of your graph. It's just a guide. Uh, when you graph this on a calculator, you won't see that dashed line, but you'll just see it sort of imaginary there. Okay, the end behavior asymptote, this is where it gets interesting, because in case three, the way we identify the end behavior asymptote is by actually dividing this poly, the rational, by dividing the rational and seeing what we're left with. So I'm going to divide, and uh, I notice that when I'm dividing the x squared minus one by x minus two, there is a hole, I'm sorry, a missing value, I don't want to use the term whole. <laughs> There's a missing term, this is x squared, so that's one x squared. You need a zero x and then the minus one. So that's an easy thing to forget there when you're using your division, so don't forget that. I'm gonna do my synthetic division. This remainder actually doesn't matter, we're gonna ignore the remainder, uh, but just out of habit I finished that off. And so what I'm left with, that's remainder, that's the constant, that's the x, so I have x plus two. So my end behavior asymptote is actually the line y equals x plus 2. Well, this goes back to algebra 1. That's a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of 1. So my, inter my asymptote is going to look like that. I'm going up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. And then I can go in the other direction, same thing. Slope of positive 1, so I'm going uphill. Um, and so I see that we've got that situation, and what I'm going to do is just sort of sketch the asymptotes out here, so you can kind of see what's going on. So the only possibilities here are this, this, or this, this. I know those are messy, but you get the idea. And these three points in here confirm that it must be this part of the function down in this region must look like that which means on the other side of the vertical asymptote, it must be up here. So we're going to get something that looks like that. I tried as best I can to hit those three points since I know those are there. The rest of it is just really just a ballpark. If you like it to be more exact, you could always actually plug in a few x values. I think if you look in your book, it actually recommends that you plug in a few x values on each side of the asymptote. We don't generally make you do that. Um, the only time we're really going to make you plug values in is if it's not clear which side it's going on. And that usually happens when there are two vertical asymptotes. But we don't have that here. So that's pretty much it for your graph. 
Um, I'm not going to write out the asymptotic behavior, but if you, uh, you know, the asymptotic behavior at the vertical asymptote, there's only one of them, so as x approaches 2 from the left, it's going down. So as you come at this thing from the left, it goes down to negative infinity. So I can write it out in the shorthand form. As x approaches 2 from the left, we go to negative infinity. And as x approaches 2 from the right, we go to positive infinity. And then the end behavior, the end behavior asymptote, so as x goes out to positive infinity, uh, the end behavior, uh, what's it doing? Well, this goes back to end behavior we saw before. This thing is going up, 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 up forever, right? Think about big, big numbers. If x goes out to a billion, then your y is a billion and two. Crazy big number, crazy big number. So it is approaching infinity. Uh, it's going up to positive infinity. And the, again, you can see that this is going up forever. So that's why it's going out to positive infinity. And in the negative direction with the x, this thing's going down forever. And so that's approaching negative infinity. Um, and that is all for case three. I hope this was helpful. Thanks. Bye-bye.